Some of us are afraid of investing in the stock market, while others are afraid of... <gasps> Steve! <laughs> No. Man, my hair is getting long. I'm growing out a bit of a flow here. You see, I'm actually a Northern Ontario boy, which means that I grew up playing puck on the ODR with a nice head of lettuce under my bucky, ripping bar down clappers, dangling the dusters, throwing chirps and selling with the boys. Hey, bud. <laughs> anyway, today we're not trying to learn about hockey slang. Instead, I want to talk about investing in the stock market and the fear that comes with it. Should you be scared of it? Like Justine when she plays video games with monsters in it? Hey, uh, can we maybe play God of War later? No, I don't like that game. Why? That's scary. You're making it scarier by turning the lights off and stuff. <laughs> God. I can't believe we're back in hell. At least we're not we're on the side of the... Can you just tell me when something's gonna come up at least? No. Steve! <laughs> oh, no! I really don't want to do this! No! <laughs> Left on the what pad? Directional pad. There you okay. go. Now use this. Oh. Okay, I'm not gonna... Let's trust. The fear of investing in the stock market is actually one of the most common things that people either send me messages or come and talk to me about. People are terrified about losing money. And I was actually featured on a podcast recently where we talked about this very thing. And even saving your money, um, I think you, you brought up investing there, but um, once you get to the point of saving your money, it, it seems like it's almost not, it's, it's not enough to just like let your money sit there because by virtue of sort of inflation every year, you're losing money. And so a way to, to counter that is to get investing, but that's a, that's a huge fear for many people. I mean, I'm personally scared as to, to, to death to, to, to invest my money and, and sort of involve myself in any risk. Fear is totally natural. It's almost unavoidable at times. And often it comes because of either two things. A, what we're doing is inherently risky or B, we don't have enough information to actually make informed decisions. But once we do have that information, even if what we're doing is a little bit risky, we're often a lot less scared of doing it. For example, driving a car is inherently dangerous. It's pretty risky to do. But many of us do it every single day without being scared and that's because we know what we're doing. We know how to drive. And the stock market is really no different. So if you're on the fence about investing or you're kind of scared to get started, well today I'm going to share with you some very helpful tips that should hopefully make you feel much more confident about investing. When you think about investing in the stock market, so let's say we buy a stock with our money here, you might be afraid of this happening all that hard earned money gone. A moment of silence for that money. And so that certainly can happen, especially if you put your money into only one stock. But there's a way to invest your money that can actually eliminate this risk. You see, there's actually two types of risk you need to know about if you're interested in investing in the stock market. And those are idiosyncratic risk and systematic risk. Idiosyncratic risk is the risk of becoming a big idiot. About 16.4% of investors experience this risk according to a paper recently published by Eugene Fama and Kenneth French. I'm just kidding, that's, that's not what it means at all. <laughs> Idiosyncratic risk and systematic risk can actually be simplified into two very easy ways to think about either of them, individual risk and market risk. Individual risk is the risk that each individual company possesses. So for example, if you were to invest 100% of your money into Tesla, then you would be 100% exposed to the risk of Elon Musk's tweets. So the idea here is that this idiosyncratic risk or this individual risk essentially represents you having just one 
egg in your basket if you invest all your money into one stock. And this is not good because obviously if this one single egg has a problem, then all your money is exposed to that risk. And this is the main risk that people are actually afraid of when it comes to investing in the stock market because this is how you can actually lose all or a lot of your money. So what do we do? How do we avoid this risk? Well, we walk into the kitchen so I can show you what's better than one egg. A lot of eggs. Well, more than one at least. Ideally this would be full, but I mean, come on, we gotta eat over here. So this new group of eggs actually represents something new and that's because by increasing the number of eggs we have, we've reduced or completely eliminated that idiosyncratic or individual risk, that risk of becoming an idiot, <laughs> which is good. We want to eliminate that individual risk, but we're still exposed to one last risk and that's the systematic or market risk. Now, this risk isn't so much about the eggs, it's more about the basket. And that's because market risk represents the entire risk of participating in the stock market in general. So here's what I mean by that. Behind me, we have this nice big body of water. And this body of water, this big lake, represents market risk. And if there were any boats on it, which uh, it actually looks like there's one. I don't know if you can actually see it, but let's imagine there's a bunch of boats on this water. So basically, because the body of water represents the market risk, this water affects all of the boats that are on the water, whereas each boat can have its own unique properties. Water is going to affect all of it. So if the tide's high, it's going to lift the boats, and if it's low, it's going to lower the boats. That's basically how market risk works in a nutshell. It affects all of the companies within a particular market, just like the way the water affects all of the boats on a particular body of water. So when we think of individual risk, think of each unique individual boat and when we think of market risk think of the entire lake or ocean so in essence we've learned a few things so far individual or idiosyncratic risk is the risk tied to investing your money into one 10 or even 50 companies and that's because your money is exposed to these unique individual risks that apply to these companies. This is bad. This is how we can lose a lot or all of our money, but we can actually reduce or eliminate this individual risk. And the way we do that is through diversification. And ideally we want to diversify our money across hundreds or even thousands of stocks. Once we have a fully diversified portfolio of stocks, we no longer have to worry about individual risk because we have our money so spread out. We only have to worry about market risk as a whole. Now, when we're talking about market risk, if you want to invest your money in stocks, this is the one risk that we can't avoid. But it turns out that's actually a good thing. And that's because in order to earn any kind of return in life, we have to take some kind of risk. And if the stock market didn't have any risks associated with it, well, there wouldn't be any reward in investing your money in it. So we actually want to be exposed to this market risk. This is the risk that we'll get paid for taking on. That's the way risk premiums work. Across asset classes, the more risky that asset class is, the higher the risk premium is going to be. And risk premium is basically just a fancy word for how much money you can probably expect to get paid by investing your money in that particular asset. And those asset classes can be stocks, they can be bonds, they can be GICs, they can be all sorts of things, but they all have varying amounts of risk and reward. But remember this, Individual risk, meaning exposing your money to just one, 10, or even 50 companies, means that you run the risk of losing money. And when I mean lose money, I mean gone for good. And that's because if a company fails, goes bankrupt, folds, whatever, your shares can definitely become worthless. But with market risk, meaning that you expose your money to a globally diversified portfolio of stocks, you don't really run the risk of losing all of your money. And that's because if you seriously spread your money out across the globe, across hundreds or even thousands of stocks, the only way that all of those companies would become worthless is if the entire world collapses and we go back to the Stone Age. And if that's the case, A, everyone will be in the same boat, 
and B, your stock portfolio being worth zero was probably not going to be the most of your concerns at that time. So now you might be thinking, Steve, this all sounds great. I don't wanna have just a few little dinky boats out there on the horizon. I don't wanna lose all my money. I wanna have a massive fleet sailing the seven seas and finding me some buried treasure. Then I would recommend that you invest in index funds because that's exactly what they do. They eliminate individual risk and they capture the risk premium on market risk. If you have no idea what an index fund is or you'd like to learn more about them, well, the good news for you is that I've just actually created a course which can definitely help you learn about index funds and how to use them to achieve your financial goals. The link for that is in the description down below. Now, if you are a bit familiar with index funds, if you're a Canadian, something like VGRO or VEQT will set you up really nicely. And for my American friends, something like VT is great, or you could go with VTI and VXUS if you're feeling a little bit frisky. And with all that being said, I'm now going to take a seat here, enjoy the view, and ponder deep questions. Thanks for watching.